Hi folks, this is Jason and hope you're okay today. We're looking at Jesus talking to a Samaritan woman and we're looking at the lessons that we can learn uh, from this. So if you'd like to turn to John chapter and um, let's come before the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day and for your love and for your grace and Lord we give you the praise and we give you the glory today and we thank you for all the good things that you've done and so God we come before you today and we ask for your forgiveness and we ask for your cleansing and for your mercies and uh, Lord we just pray that you would be in this message that your Holy Spirit would be in it, that it would bring life to people and that people would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. We ask that the Satan would not be able to snatch the seed from these messages, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you'd like to turn to John uh, chapter 4. Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples he left Judea and departed again unto Galilee then cometh he to a city of Samaria which is called Simica near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph now Jacob's well was there and Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. His disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, askest the drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knew is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou hast asked them, and he would have given thee living water. <coughs> the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, from whence thou hast the living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said, to, said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst <coughs> but the water I give him shall be in him a, a well of water springing up into everlasting life the woman said unto him sir give me this water that I may thirst not neither come thither to draw <coughs> and Jesus said unto her go call thy husband and come hither and the woman answered and said I have no husband Jesus said unto her thou for thou hast had five husbands and he whom thou hast is not thy husband in that saidest thou truly the woman said unto him sir I perceive that thou art a prophet our father worshipped in the mountain and you say that in Jerusalem is the place wherein men ought to worship and Jesus said unto her woman believeth me the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the father you worship you know not what we we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh to worship for the Father seeketh to worship him God is spirit and in spirit and in truth the woman said unto him, I know the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I that seek unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou? Why walkest with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way unto the city and said to the men, Come and see a man which told me all things ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. 
So this is uh, what we're looking at. We're looking at uh, the Samaritan woman. She's there at the well. Jesus is at the well. And Jesus asks her to give her some water, and that initiates a conversation where Jesus says he is the living water. That Jesus goes to the Samaritan woman. The Samaritans were not respected by the Jews. They were not seen as important. Yet Jesus goes to this lady, who's a Samaritan woman, and shows her that she is important. It reminds me of Gladys Awood, a, a small person, a small woman, and she applied to be a missionary to missionary societies to go to China, and no one would take her on because she was a nobody. Yet God used her in a mighty way to save children in China. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 to 27, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 to 27. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world, and God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God comes to somebody, um, a Samaritan woman who is seen as not important, and he comes to save her. God chooses the weak things to confound the mighty. You might feel as if you're not important. You might feel as if you're on the scrap heap of society even. I don't know. But God comes to use the weak things of the world to confound the mighty. Sorry about this. I'll just... Just shut the window so we can't. About the uh, Samaritan woman is that Jesus loved her. Jesus loved her. And it's important to, to recognize that. If you turn to John chapter 4, verse 4 and 8. And he must needs go through Samaria, then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. The Lord went to this lady and wanted to show her his love. Even though he's asking her for a drink, he's doing it because he wants to bring her into a conversation to be saved. Our Lord often goes out of his way to seek and to save that which is lost. Reminded of David Wilkinson, a famous preacher who went to the gangs of New York to tell them about the love of Jesus. Jesus wants you to be saved today. Whatever your background, wherever you're from, he wants you to be saved. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. One John four nine and eleven. In this was manifest that the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here is love, not that we love God, sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. But God sent his Son, here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. When Christ came, he was a propitiation. That means he appeased the wrath of God. When Christ died on the cross, he took your judgment and your punishment for your sin. If you turn to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7.
Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace God offers you redemption when Christ died on a cross he took your punishment for your sin he's offering you forgiveness that's what he wants for you and he loved her and he loves you today and he wants you to know his his love the Samaritan woman was not only loved, she was invited. John chapter 3, verse 10 and 13. Jesus answered and said unto him, sorry, John chapter 4, sorry, 10 and 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, whence thou hast that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank therein himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said, unto her whosoever drinketh of this water will thirst again but whosoever drinketh of the water that I will give him shall never thirst but the water that I will give him shall be in a well of water springing up into everlasting life the Lord Jesus Christ offered this lady living water of the Holy Spirit she was invited to come and know God through the baptism and regeneration of the Holy Spirit the, to be born again of the Holy Spirit and God offers you today salvation whether you're a prostitute whether you're a uh, a thief or whether you're a religious person by God you are invited by God to come and believe and trust and find forgiveness and peace and joy today revelations 2 21 6 Revelation 21 6 Revelation 21 6 and he said unto me it is done I am the Alpha the Omega the beginning and the end I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely he that shall inherit all things and I will be as God and he shall be my son Whoever thirst come and he will quench your thirst spiritually. Isaiah 55 verse 1. Oh, everyone that and he that have no money come to buy, eat. Ye come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Come, you're invited. Yes, you, you are invited. You might think you're not, but you are. You might think God doesn't want you, but he does. John 7, 38. 30, John 7, 37 and 38. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If a man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. Come to him and believe in him, and you shall be forgiven. She was loved, she was invited, and she was exposed. John 4 15. John 4 15. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come thither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he who thou hast is not thy husband and that said us truly the woman said unto him sir I perceive that thou art a prophet the Lord Jesus Christ confronted her with her sin showed her that she was a sinner and if you're going to know God you have to acknowledge that you are a sinner 
Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every human being is a sinner. 1 John 17. One, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Galatians 5.19 says Now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings and such like of this of which I tell you before as I have also told you in times past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If we're, going, if we're going to know God, then God will expose our sin and show us what we're really like. The light will come in and show us what we have to do, that we are not what we should be. And then she was taught. The Samaritan woman was taught John chapter 4 verse 21 John 4 21 Jesus said unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father you worship you know not what we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such as to, to, to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, she was radically, radically taught a radical message that she had not heard before and was revolutionary. The Samaritans argued with the Jews as to which building, which mountain they should worship at and Jesus says that if you're to worship God it's not about a mountain or a building it's about your heart and whether you're worshiping God in spirit and in truth. That was the lesson that she had to learn. Spirit and truth the truth is about Christ. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit of God. Until we come to know a relationship with God by the Holy Spirit, we can never know God. If you turn to John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He had to be born again. You have to be born again. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. 
neither by works of righteousness, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's by the renewing of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we can know God, that we can serve God. That That is the knowledge, that is the teaching that Jesus was given. He said, we worship in spirit and truth. He is referring to the need to be born again. Romans 5.5 5. Romans 5, 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us by the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit gives us himself, we have a heart that's changed and we can love God. Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all peace, joy and peace, believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The lesson that she had to learn was the need to be born again of the Holy Spirit and to trust in Christ for her relationship with God. So we've seen that the Lord comes to the weak to confound the mighty. We've seen that the Lord came to the Samaritan woman and he loved her and wanted her saved. And the same is for you. He loves you and wants you to be saved. We've seen the Samaritan woman invited. And you are invited today to know God. We've seen the Samaritan woman was exposed. God showed her her sin, showed her that she had many men and needed to repent. God shows you today that you're a sinner and need to repent. But then we see that she was taught, taught that and you need to be born again of the Holy Spirit. So I'll give you a minute to close your eyes and pray. So come before the Lord and ask him to forgive you and cleanse you today and to give you a new heart. Father God, we ask that you would forgive us today. We ask for a new heart. We ask that we would worship you in spirit and truth, not get bogged down with buildings or get bogged down with where we worship. But we would concentrate on a heart relationship with you. A heart relationship with the Holy Spirit. So Lord, those who are not born again today, I pray that you would open their hearts to put their faith in you. And I pray for all of us that we would look to you and trust in you and Father, I pray that you bless this message on all of us, that the devil would not snatch it away and that it would be an encouragement to all who hear it and a strength to people's faith and a help to people who do not know you. We ask these things, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening and God bless you. I might just um, have a little break for a while, get some dinner. And uh, I'll be back later to make maybe some apologetic videos. We shall see. So thank you for listening and God bless you.